and how that is, it is important that we pray. And I hope you've been praying more. I've been praying more, and, it's, and it helps me. And I certainly hope these verses are a, a blessing to you because uh, prayer is their most needed, you know, is their most needed thing every day. It is their most needful thing in our day is prayer. And, of course, with prayer comes our Bible reading, and that's our most important things that we can do uh, in, in any day is that, and for, also for our services. But in Acts chapter number 4, verse number 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Now, when they had all prayed... That's what, when, when everybody prays, then God always does something. God always moves when people are praying. And uh, the more we together as a church pray uh, for the things of our church, then the more God will bless us uh, as we pray together. So we certainly should pray. And uh, th that's something that uh, I, I, we can never stress enough how important prayer is to us. In uh, Matt, it, uh, someone, if you will, look up Matthew chapter number 5 in verse number 44. Uh, someone on my right. Someone in the middle, look up Matthew 6 in verse 6. And someone on my left, look up Matthew 26 in verse number 41 and read those verses uh, beginning with, with the, whoever gets it on the right first. Matthew 5, 44. <clears throat> Pray for them that despitefully use you. We find all kinds of verses on prayer in the scripture and, and our direction to pray and to how to pray for people. How many people ever have to have someone despitefully use you? Uh, everybody in here has. You know, well, uh, maybe unbeknownst to you. And what does it do? It, it makes you ill, don't it? It upsets you when somebody despitefully uh, uses you. And, and uh, uh but, but what does the Bible say about that? It says we are to pray for them that despitefully use us. And uh, I was thinking, you know, the Bible says in everything give thanks. Sometimes that's hard. But also on the other hand, when the Bible says that we're to pray for people, sometimes that's not real easy to pray for your enemies, to pray for those. But we must do it because it's a command of the Word of God. And so we do pray for those that despitefully use us. All right, uh, Matthew 6 and verse 6. God in heaven wants special time with you and I. He wants it. Now, does that literally mean to, to get into the closet and pray? If you want it to, that's exactly what that means. But the idea here is that we get alone. Now, what's in the closet? Most people got my, my closet is you wouldn't want to see what's in my closet. My wife gave me the hall closet. I can't, you know, our closet isn't big enough in the bedroom for uh, her nice arranged stuff and my mess, so I got the hall closet. And uh, in my closet is is cluttered up and it's it's clothes in there. But if, with all of that out, with all of that out of the way, what's in your closet? Nothing. What could you do in that closet? Shut yourself in there and be alone. And that's what that's what the implication is here that we get alone with God. It is implied that somewhere that we get along with God and we pray in our secret place. Now that may be, you know, that may be anywhere. Anywhere that you can get along with God, away from the TV, away from the uh, noise and the disturbances of life and the distractions of life, is somewhere that you and I should get along in our prayer closet and pray and call out to the Lord. It might be lying in your bed at night. Now the best remedy for sleep is, is prayer. Uh, if you don't believe me, try it. Amen. You, you start praying, and, and, and some people say, well, that's, you know, that's what the devil does. You get to pray, and he makes you go to sleep. Look, I'm not going to blame that on the devil. If I'm praying, and I go to sleep praying, I can't think of no better way to go to sleep than calling out to God. Amen. And so, you know, if, if, if you're having problems sleeping, just start talking to the Lord, and you'll find yourself in la-la land, and, you went, and, and sometimes, not every time, but sometimes, guess what you wake up doing? You wake up praying. 
And, uh, and, and so uh, it is imperative that we spend some time alone with God in our secret place, in our prayer closet, and wherever that might be for you. Uh, uh, days of old, I remember many days of old when the prayer closet was somewhere on a hillside. Now, my granddaddy had a place that he prayed uh, over on, uh, over uh, above Bar well, not above Barnesville, but to the side of Barnesville at Paint Fork. Y'all know probably where it's at. And there's a little white church up there at the end of the road before it starts up the mountain. And my grandma and grandpa lived uh, up, uh, up the road right in front of that church. And I'd go over there in the summertime, and, and I'd wander around the woods. I'd, I'd wander around the woods and swing on grapevines and jump off rocks and play in the creek and just all the things little boys ought to do when they're growing up that they don't ever do anymore. But I did all those things. And my granddaddy had a place over there near a big rock. And the ground was packed and hard and cracked where he had prayed. Now, Grandpa, prayed, he prayed standing up. and He balked back and forth across there. And the ground was packed and hard. That was his secret place. And that was his place of prayer. And, and many times, you know, uh, days of old, people would get out and they'd get out in the woods somewhere and they'd have a, you know, they'd pray and they'd call out to God. They had to get away from the house, get away from the chickens, get away from the animals, so they'd go up on the hill somewhere and pray. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if you want to do that today. Amen. I've, I've done it, been there and done that, and, and it's a very good, uh, very good thing to do, a very good place to get. But wherever you can get away from the distractions of life to pray, then, friend, you should have some time alone in your closet, in your secret place, to pray and to talk to the Lord. Uh, all right, uh, Matthew 26 and verse 41. <clears throat> Amen. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Now, I took these scriptures. I took these scriptures. I took uh, not every one of them, but the ones that the Lord laid upon my heart. Uh, how many of you are tempted every day? Everybody raise your hand. Uh, that's a no-brainer. Everybody's tempted every day because the, the devil's main objective is to tempt us. And... Our objective is to not to yield to that temptation. And so uh, we don't want to enter into temptation. We want to pray God will keep us from temptation, and God will direct us into some temptation we won't have to deal with because God directs us away from some temptation. And if you've got a weakness that you're tempted with all the time, if you'll pray that God leads you, you know, keep you from temptation then and and follow God he'll keep you away from those places or those things that tempt you in life to sin and so we should pray that we enter not into temptation that we enter not to be you know uh, and and what and how we do that is by prayer uh, I said Lord help me not to sin God help me not now I do I all I fall I fail every day everybody in here fails every day and you do something that's not right with God, every one of us. But, I, but that's not my heart's desire. My heart's desire is not to sin. And I pray, Lord, help me. God, help me not to sin. Help me to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. In praying that, uh, you, you're essentially saying, Lord, uh, you know, lead me not into temptation. Lord, don't let me be tempted today. And I, however, we, you know, that comes our way. But those certain things that we're tempted uh, desperately to do by the devil because it's a weak place in our life, if we pray, God will help us with those things. All right, let's do a couple more verses here, and then we'll, we'll, we don't want to give you too much to chew on at one time. So let's go about two or three more verses here, and then we'll uh, look at Mark. Somebody on my right get Mark 6, 46. Uh, someone in the middle get Mark, I'm sorry, someone in the middle get Luke 11 and verse 1, and someone on the left get Luke 18 and verse 1. <clears throat> that's where Christ sent him away when Christ sent him away there, that's what I was talking about a minute ago he went to the mountain to pray now he did that a lot now who is Christ he is God in the flesh he is the God man he is the son of God Yet he found it necessary and needful to pray to the Father. Now, if God, 
thought it necessary for him to pray himself, then should we not much more need to get along and pray? It, I, it, to me, that's, that speaks volumes of how we should act in our prayer life. If Jesus did it, if he went alone to pray, and he was God in the flesh, and he went alone, uh, got alone to pray, should we not get alone to pray and talk to the Father? Lord, help me. Every time I read these verses, I get under conviction of my own prayer life because I know that it is not sufficient. And I don't know that it ever will be because when I compare myself to, to Christ as he prayed, uh, he got alone many times. He got alone by himself to pray, and he would pray for hours. Now, I'm not saying that you should pray for hours. I don't know, but you pray till you know you've touched God and you've got, uh, you've got your prayers through to the Lord. All right, someone, whoever's got uh, Luke 11 in verse number 1. Teach us to pray. They were wanting, they were wanting the Lord to teach them to pray. Now, how do you, how do you pray? How do you pray? Now, I, I have, over the years, I've realized that when men pray, first we have to acknowledge who we are praying to. And I believe that's an important part of our prayer life is as we, you know, we've, we've covered this a time or two already, but as we bow before an almighty God, we need to acknowledge who that we're praying to. And who is he? He's the God of heaven. He's the creator. He's the one that made heaven and the earth. Uh, he's the God of eternity past, and he'll be the God of eternity future. Uh, he's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. And when we pray, we should address our prayers to him and, and say, God in heaven, uh, Lord, we know who you are. I recognize you for who you are. And God, I know that you're the God in heaven that can answer my prayers. I have no one else to turn to. Lord, I'm turning to you because you are my, you are the object of my prayer. You are who I want to project my prayers to and, and acknowledge him for who he is and pray to him. How do we pray? We acknowledge God for who he is. And then it doesn't do us, it doesn't do you no harm at all. And it does, gives great glory to God when we just pray and praise him for a little bit and thank him. Man, I got so much to be thankful for. I'm not going to hell when I die. Amen. I've got a good church I can come to. I've got people that love me. I've got, I got people that I have confidence in that if I need any time, any hour of the day, I know that I can call on you. Amen. And I don't, I don't see a person in this room that if I needed someone and I had your phone number, I believe you'd help me if I needed help. But guess what? I'm the same way. There's not a person in this, in this room or on Sunday morning, matter of fact, any time that if they need me, uh, you know, I keep my phone on. Now, sometimes, I, like I did last night, I, I turned it down and forgot to turn the volume back up, never turned the volume back up. And, uh, of course, I got a phone call before I got the volume turned back up. But normally, you know, my phone's up, and, and it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if you need me. Call me. Now, listen, it wouldn't bother me in the middle of the night to call you if I needed something. Now, if I needed, a, if, if it was imperative that I had uh, have to have a cake of, of uh, Mexican cornbread at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to put her on the spot. Amen. I think if I said, I said, look, I, I've, got a, I've got the jerks and the twitches, and I need some, the only thing that's going to help is some Mexican cornbread, and I, and I can get there in about an hour, and I, hey, can you, can you make it for me? See, I'm gonna, see there, she'd make it for me. Now you say, now that's a, look, if anybody in, in the world would, would bake cornbread, for me at 2 o'clock in the morning, amen, and, and I ask them to do that, you know what that is? That's, a, that's somebody you can count on, and whatever it might be. If James was here and my chainsaw wasn't working, that wouldn't bother me to call James. James, my chainsaw ain't working. Can you help me? Or, or, just, in, or just anything. I've got a pipe broke. Brother Lawrence, I don't know if you know anything about plumbing, but I, I can't get a hold of nobody else. Will you come help me get this water turned off? I believe... I, you know, I believe that I believe Brother Lawrence would come help me, wouldn't you, Brother Lawrence? And on the same thing, if you call me, look, my son's in the hospital. Can you come up? Yeah, I'll be there. 
They give me time to get my clothes on and I'll be there. And so when we pray, we direct our object, we, we know who we're praying to, and then we just thank the Lord for things, that, for friends, and, and we thank the Lord and give Him praise for our church and for people that we can worship with and, and for the protection of our family and thank Him for our families. And then after you get through doing that a little while, you might just forget what you started asking for to start with. But then you make your petitions known unto God, and He hears you, and He'll answer your prayer. And we make our requests made known unto God, and He hears you, and He'll answer your prayer. All right, uh, Luke 11, Luke chapter 18, verse number 1. Pray always and not faint. Men ought to always to pray. What can I add to that? Somebody tell me what the definition is of all is. Anybody got a better definition for all than all? All. Everything. All. And we must to all ways. In every way. All the time be subject to where we can talk to the Lord at any moment. Any given moment, we ought to be close enough where we can call out to the Lord. And, you know, when, when David was praying, many times you read in the Psalms and you'll find where he said, Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Sometimes that's all I know to pray. I, I've mentioned that many times. Sometimes all I know to say is, Help, Lord. Because, you know why? Because God knows my, he knows my heart. He knows what's in there. And I don't always have to verbally breathe everything to God. I don't have to always verbally make every petition to the Lord. Because sometimes I don't know. I was praying the other night with someone. I, I, Lord, I don't know what to ask you. Lord, I don't, I don't know what to ask you. I, I don't know what to ask you to do. But Lord, I know you know what to do. And so I say, Lord, just help. God, just help. And you know what? God always helps. All he wants us, uh, for us to do, he just wants us to ask him. He wants us, God desires conversation with us. God's got a, he's got a listening ear, and he loves it when you and I take time to converse with him. But how much do we neglect talking to the one that can meet our every need, that can give us the desires of our heart, that can bless us in so many ways, how guilty am I of missing out on that conversation. Lord, help me to pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Lord, as we continue our study and prayer, God, we, I realize more and more, God, how I failed you in talking to you, and I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'd help me. God, many things get in our way of, of calling upon you, and I'm sorry. God, help us, Lord, to pray. Teach us to pray. And Lord, let us pray according to thy will and thy plan and thy purpose. And God, we pray that you bless our church. God, continue to help us. Lord, you've been, you've been good to us here, and I pray, God, you continue to bless us. Help us to grow. Lord, bless us on the coming Lord's Day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Any, uh, let me read you.